Exodus 35 and verse 1, it says, And Moses gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel together and said unto them, These are the words which the Lord hath commanded that you should, you should do them. Six days shall work be done, and but on the seventh day there shall be to you an holy day, a Sabbath of rest to the Lord. Whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. Ye shall kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. And Moses spake unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, Take you from among you an offering unto the Lord. Whosoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it an offering of the Lord, gold and silver and brass. That's that Old Testament Sabbath day and what the Lord told Moses to tell the children of Israel. Understand today that, that we are not under the Jewish Sabbath. That was between God and the Jew. We're not under the Sabbath. In fact, the Bible says to re, uh, judge no man in respect of a holy day. To one man esteemeth one day uh, uh, the same as the other, so to speak. Said one, uh, one man esteemeth every day alike. So we're not under that Jewish Sabbath. We're, we're not Jews. All right? But the Lord's church can do nothing unless God's people, the principle here tonight still stands today. God's people need to have a willing heart before they can do anything for God. And uh, you don't do it from a, a sense of duty or, or feel like you have to do this and have to do that. You do it because your heart, if it's right with God, ought to be willing to do something for God, to, to sing for God, to play for God, to, to witness for God. Whatever you can do, whatever God has set in front of you for the cause of Christ, he gives you ability to, to do. Uh, you can be a prayer warrior. There's nothing more important to any work of the Lord and to the cause of Christ than prayer, the prayers of the saints. He'd be willing to serve, willing to give, willing to witness, willing to pray, willing to spend time in the Word of God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. We've got to know where God stands on the issues. You've got to know what God says. And you've got to be willing. Uh, many times it's willing to do something that perhaps no one else is doing. Coming to a church, what, what is not being done here that I think maybe I could do? I mean, uh, most folks know I'm not going to get on anybody for trying to do some kind of ministry just because I didn't think of it. Uh, but you can do that. In verse 20 it says, And all the congregation of the children of Israel departed from the presence of Moses. And they came everyone whose heart stirred him up. There it is. Everyone whose heart stirred him up and everyone whom his spirit made willing. See, it's a spiritual thing. Spirit's got to, got to make you willing. And they brought the Lord's offering to the work of the tabernacle of the con congregation and for all his service and for the holy garments. And they came both men and women, as many as were willing-hearted and brought bracelets and earrings and rings and tablets, all jewels of gold. And every man that offered, offered an offering of gold unto the Lord. So I'm going to get some water here. I, when was the last time that your Lord and Savior stirred your heart up and made you willing to do something? Just because the Lord stirred your heart up to do it. I'm sure he has. He has in my life. Like I just told the story on witnessing to that fella, leading that fella that I'm, I'm burying Friday. The Lord stirred my heart up. Now's the time, son. You better... You, you better Go be about my business. Need to be about the Lord's business all the time. It says, And they came, everyone whose heart stirred him up, and everyone whom his spirit made willing. I, I think sometimes our hearts get stirred up, but our spirit just don't make us willing. What's it, what, what does it take? What does it take for our hearts to get Stirred up for the, the work of our Lord. We're the church. We're the ones, if we don't do it, who is? 
and all the women. I knew we'd get around to that. There's, there, right there it is. Are, are you listening, ladies? Tammy, pay attention to this part here. And, and all the women that were wise-hearted. Did you get that? Amen's all over the building here. All the women that were wise-hearted did spin with their hands and brought that which they had spun, both of blue and purple and of scarlet and of fine linen. And all the women whose hearts stirred them up in wisdom spun goat's hairs. That means if you're good at something, you do what you're good at. Uh, one of the, the terms here, that it says, it talks about whose heart stir them up in wisdom, taught them how to learn how to do something. And we see the building of the tabernacle, and uh, the Lord told them, get folks who were cunning at doing this, being smart about it. You know, you don't get a plumber to do the drywall work, and you don't get a drywall man to do the plumbing. You, folks that are cunning at what they do are good at what they do. So here we, again, we see that they did things for God because their hearts were stirred up. The children of Israel brought a willing offering unto the Lord, every man and woman whose heart made them willing to bring for all the manner of work which the Lord had commanded to be made by the hand of Moses. Now the Lord here had commanded them to do something, but it got done because they had willing hearts to do what God stirred them up to do and commanded them to do. Exodus 36 and verse 1 says, Then wrought uh, Bezalel and uh, Aholiab and every wise-hearted man. That takes in about everybody, man in this room, I'd say. Wise-hearted. Any, don't hear any amens in that part. In whom the Lord put wisdom and understanding, here it is again, to know how to work all manner of work for the service of the sanctuary according to all that the Lord had commanded. They had people do what they were good at to the glory of God. Now, Natalie just finished, they just finished building their house. Joyce and I were up there the other day for a while. What a beautiful uh, woodwork that Lonnie had done. And I was trying to remember, Natalie didn't call me to come do that, that detailed woodworking. Those stair, big staircases and those rails and banisters, all that. She didn't call me to do that. But Lonnie, what, a, what an artist he is with that stuff. It's beautiful. All right, and Moses called Bezalel and Aholiab and every wise-hearted man in whom whose heart the Lord had put wisdom, even everyone whose heart stirred him up to come and to the work to do it. <coughs> God giving you any wisdom about things? What are you good at? God's made you smart about something. I'll, I've, many times I've told young people, if you want to make a living, you get real good at one thing. You learn a trade of some type, and you get real good at it. That's, you're the guy they're going to come and get when something needs done in that line that you're in because you've, you've gotten good at it. You want something done? You, you want to have the best person who's good at what they do to come do it. And that leaves me out of 90% of the work right there. I tell folks I'm not good at anything, but I'm almost good at several things. I thought always, everyone told me what a, when I was playing music, I was playing six nights a week, boy, getting through college, and everybody said, boy, what a great bass player you are. When I got to the major leagues there on the Grand Ole Opry, I found that I was somewhat mediocre. I wasn't near as... I was almost good at that level, but I wasn't. Uh, it's kind of a hard crowd to work tonight. Let me move on here. God giving you wisdom, he gives you understanding. Do you know how to work all manner of work for the service of the sanctuary? If you have any of those things, the only thing lacking is for you to go to work for God, for God to stir your heart up. That's the only thing left is for God to stir your heart to do something. And it don't have to be manual work. Prayer warriors, get on your knees for the glory of God. J 
Jan has a great way with, with words or write. How many books? 40-something books she's written. To the glory of God. Do things for the cause of Christ. God giving you wisdom. God giving you understanding. You know how to work the matter of work. If you, don't, if, if you have any of those things, the only thing lacking is for God to get in our hearts and stir them up and say it's time that we get out and do something. What were the four guys outside the temple? And they said, well, why is well, sit we here till we die? They went in and everything worked out much better than they were expecting. And Moses called Bezalel and Aholiab and every wise-hearted man. And then it says in verse 3, And they received of Moses all the offering <coughs> which the children of Israel had brought for the work of the service of the sanctuary to make it withal. And they brought yet unto him free offerings every morning. And all the wise men that wrought all the work of the sanctuary came every man from his work which they made. And they spake unto Moses, saying, The people bring much more than enough. Do you hear that? And they brought much more than enough for the service of the work which the Lord commanded to make. We find uh, from Scripture that if our hearts are stirred up for God, and that's what brought this on, and we become willing to do something for God, we find that God is always the God of more than enough. God's people's hearts get stirred up. It's, it's just unlimited what God can do. And it don't take a big crowd what God can do through a handful. In Haggai 1.14 it says, And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of uh, Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Josedek, and the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and did work in the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. Said God stirred up the his spirit. And we see it over and, and over again. Uh, when God stirs up uh, someone's spirit and gets their heart uh, burdened and, and stirred up for God, things can happen to the glory of God. That's what we're here for. We're here to bring glory to God. First and foremost, all things were created by him and for him and for his glory they are and were created. That's why I was created. I was created not for me to hang out and have a wonderful time and, and play hillbilly music with my friends. That wasn't why I was created. I was created to bring glory to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's the main purpose. Now, now when I split his time up with my own time, I resort to those other things. And now, Acts 17, 16, now while Paul waited for them at Athens, watch it, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Man, we look around us now. That's exactly what's going on now. The whole country, it seems like the whole world is given to nothing but idolatry. It's crazy. Craziest time I've ever seen in my life. Surely it's the craziest time you've ever seen in your life. Now, Teddy is a, a whole lot older than I can. I, I am. I'd say it's a, the craziest time you ever saw in your life, Teddy. Is that right? Amen. Okay. I have to take back that remark about you being older than me. Just When he saw the city wholly given to idolatry, don't that break your heart? Don't that want to stir you up? Say, somebody needs to tell them about Jesus Christ. Somebody needs to speak up. Somebody needs to, to start doing something for the Lord. That's what's, what was going on here. Paul saw that that whole city had gone crazy. It says, when he saw the city holy, given to idolatry. Not part way, but holy. We're, just, we're, we're hitting about 98% right now. Don't you think? When Paul saw all the sin and the craziness around him, the Bible says his spirit was stirred in him. He, he, God put it in his heart to do something for him. 2 Corinthians 8, 11. Now therefore... 
perform the doing of it. Okay, just let your heart get stirred up and go to the house. Let now therefore perform the doing of it that as, watch it, here it is, that as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which ye have. For if there first be, for if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to that he hath not. Say, well, preacher, I'm not able to do that. God's not wanting you to do something you're not able to do, or that you're not going to do it. But there are some things that you can do. That's what God wants you to do. He don't want you to do stuff that you you don't have the ability to do. Isn't that what that's saying? Willing mind is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to that he hath not. For I mean not that other men be used and ye burden. Now, context here is probably giving. But still, God don't want from you what you don't have to give. What's the old saying? He, he qualifies the called and calls, he don't call the qualified, he qualifies the called. But there's some things that you can do. There's some things that I can do that I haven't been doing. I think we all find ourselves in that, that category from time to time. 2 Corinthians 8, 11, Now therefore perform the doing of it, that as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which you have. For if there first be a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to that he hath not. For I mean not that other men be used. And you be burdened. Did you see what I just read? Now, therefore, performing the perform the doing of it. It comes down to the point where sometimes you just got to get in there and do it. Not just think about it. Not think, boy, I ought to be doing this. Was it uh, Bob Jones Senior had to say, "What what you would be what you would be for God, you are now becoming." One of Bob Jones' chapel sayings. <clears throat> God never asks you to do something you can't, or to give you something that you can't give him. He said it's accepted according to that a man hath. He said that he'll accept whatever you've got to give, not what you don't have to give. It is accepted according to that a man hath. A fellow once said that the best ability that a man can have is availability. I've heard that with dependability and that kind of thing. Availability is the best ability that a fellow can have in the service of God. Here am I, Lord, send me. Well, Lord, send him. See him over there. Man, he's good at that. Lord, send him to do that. Hmm. God just wants you to do what you're able to do. You're able to sing, God can use you. You're able to drive a church van, God can use you. You're able to cook for someone who can't cook for themselves, God can use you. You're able to give to someone in need, God can use you to fill a need for someone else. You're able to sweep off the sidewalks, God can use you. You're able to water the flowers, God can use you. You're able to pray for someone, God can sure use you. For if there first, our, verse, our text, verse 12, for if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according that a man hath, and not according that he hath not. Then it says, for I mean that, not that other men be eased. I don't mean that other men just sit at the house while you're doing all the work. Mm. I mean, uh, there two or three people shouldn't have to do all the work you want to come to the building, there should be others come over and help, lend a hand, help out. But it all begins with a stirred up heart and a willingness to do it. it says in Nehemiah 4, 6, so built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together into the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. They had a mind to work. I don't know, you know, there's some, I, I, if I like doing something, I'll work daylight to dark. If it's something I don't like, I don't hang around it too much. 
That's a weakness. That's not a virtue. That's a weakness. One of my weaknesses. I'm one of my cousins one time, Harry Gabbard. <laughs> Harry Gabbard, they put him to work at Hill and Brands, and he had to put something in a, li a little down a little hole and put a spring on a screw and put it down over and over and do that all day. And he, uh, the way the story goes, he worked there about four hours, and he come there and said, "If that's all in the world you've got for me to do," said, "I'll see you later, boys." He wasn't going to work eight hours a day putting that little. But uh, I mean, it may be a trait. Is that a ga gabbard trait? No, you don't have enough. These guys all have big work ethics. Uh, Jeremiah, uh, Phil Gabbard, he'll work, he'll work like a barred mule, just work all man. All right, let me move on. But it begins with a stirred up heart. So we built the wall and all the wall was joined together into the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. But then again, what to take to stir up God's people? Uh, with Paul, he just looked at that city and it was wholly taken over by idolatry. Man, what? somebody's got to do something uh, for the cause of Christ. Somebody needs, hey, if this crowd, now Jonah didn't think that those Ninevites deserved to be saved, and they probably didn't. I didn't deserve to be saved, but God said, you go declare my name whether they deserve it or not. That's God's business. Jesus Christ deserves to be declared whether any of this crowd deserves to be saved or not. Does that make sense? After what he did, at least we ought to declare his name, his saving power, his peace, his joy, his righteousness, his long-suffering. Hmm. Do, do, do lost souls stir you to witness? Does our children stir us up uh, uh, to come to the house of God, bring your kids? How about your grandkids? Nieces and nephews. Our, our, my, my brother Aubrey's granddaughter, we're picking her up for church. Her name is Marilyn, Marilyn Biddle. And man, she is absolutely loving it. On the way home, strapped her in the, the back, back seat, and she's got a little doll in her arms. She says, away in a manger. No crib and sing right on key. Ever know what I'm listening to? Man, she's singing in tune. And then you listen to see if they're singing in meter, what they call in meter, coming in at the. Wow, how old is she? Anybody know four? How old is she, Joyce? Four. How about a marriage that's going south? Well, that stare you to come to the house of God? Man, this marriage is going downhill. We need to. Maybe get closer to God. Let's go to church. Let's do something for God. Wayward child, broken lives. Need something to stir hearts up in the church. We, we have a tragedy. Uh, people have a tragedy and they begin making deals with God. I've seen it over and over. Lord, if you get me through this, I swear I'll be in church every Sunday. It, I've never known of the occasion of that word ever worked out. Achan had taken the accursed thing. Joshua had been defeated. He was discouraged. Joshua 17, and the Lord said to Joshua, Get thee up. Can you imagine that? The great, the great warrior, the great fighter, Joshua, taking city after city, and, and he came back, and they, they'd taken children of Israel, and he was laying on his face so defeated. God said, get thee up. Sounds like my daddy. And I didn't want to do so. You better get out there, big boy. Mm. And the Lord said to Joshua, get thee up. Wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? Hmm. Boy, that would run them off on Sunday morning. Get you up, you sorry bunch of rascals. Do something for God. You think half the Sunday crowd would head out? You say they already have. All right, let me move on. John 17, 7. I'm about done. I'm running out. Sanctify them through thy truth. John 17, 17. Thy word is truth. 
And as thou hast sent me into the world, watch it, Jesus speaking, even so have I also sent them unto the world, into the world. That's you and that's me. And for their sakes I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. When the world were not of the world, God separated us from this world to be a peculiar people to him. Now it's time for us to do what he sent us to do. We need to get on a little fire, stir up a little fire. Man, I'm going through some wood. My house, trying to keep that fire going. Sometimes it don't last till morning, but I'm burning wood that was old. When I cut it, it had been pithy, old, some, some oak, but it, it's burning. But I'm about out of it. I got another row of oak, but I got a big bunch of heavy wood out there to split. But that fire, you know, that, that when those, those ashes that, and, and those coals will burn for a while, but, man, it gets colder and colder and colder. The, that fire needs to be tended. The fire that God put in your heart, the moment you got saved, you need to tend to that fire. You need something to stir your heart up and stir your spirit up to do the work for the cause of Christ. And I know this is the, the Wednesday night crowd. This is the, uh, the preacher preaching to the choir. I understand that. But still, we need encouraged by the word of God. We need encouraged every one of us, no matter what. Just a handful of folks can do a lot for the cause of Christ. I'm done. Everyone stand up tonight. <coughs> Ain't God good? Sometimes I'm stirred up by, by, uh, by God whooping up on me over something. And I know, and I know where it come from. Said, God, forgive me. It's time I got on taking care of business. Instead of taking care of my own business, I need to take care of your business first. What did the fellow say? The guy said, I trow not. I like that. Look up that passage in Scripture, the story around it. The fellow worked all day, worked like a dog, and he come in and Thought he'd sit down. His master said, I trow not. He said, you're my servant. You do this and that for me. Oh, well. Here we go. What are we doing, Jeff? 308. 308. 308. Mm-hmm.